time for us to get into the community development segment. Now, today we're going to be looking at some infrastructure issues. Um, one of the biggest problems that we have is when we build. First of all, build. Mm -hmm. But when we build, the lack of maintenance, you know, it's a very, very, very big problem. And I think that public facilities are worst hit by this lack of maintenance attitude sure. because the whole mindset is, is it your father's property? You understand? Sure. And when you are showing keen interest and in doing the right yes. thing and, doing the, and showing concern in doing the right thing, either uh, making sure that the place is swept or making sure that, you know, if there's a, a, a broken window, you go and alert somebody about it. It's like, hey, why, why are you yes. being so, you know, um, it's a problem. Okay. Now, if we all don't pay attention to maintenance, then whatever investment we make, right, is short-lived. Sure. Because you put the money in, but all those who should be caring don't care. Because in their mind, it's not my father's property. Even your father's property, cry, you don't look after it. Mm -hmm. How much more somebody's property? And your mind is that it's not my father's property. Do you get it? So it's a problem. Infrastructure issues. Now, today we're going to go over to the central region and look at the story of a school over 60 years in existence, and it's just been run down, okay? Um, Chris, I don't know how you feel about maybe even say your alma mater, you know, your school, uh, what state it's in, uh, how it looks, how that makes you feel, and so on. I, I don't know if you have any thoughts to share on, on that. Well, for me, um it's, it's embarrassing mm -hmm. if your school is going through um, any of that, yeah. um, especially when it comes to infrastructure. It's very mm -hmm. embarrassing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel like, um, like you said, it's, it's the lack of the maintenance. Yeah. Like if there's a new leadership every mm -hmm. year or mm -hmm. every two years or every mm -hmm. five years or every yeah. 10 years, I think that has to also be something they need to put into consideration. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. we are not here just to um, monitor the students, yeah. but we are also here to make sure that they are comfortable to yeah. learn because yeah. it's a school. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Because if everything is falling apart, yeah. where will they sit? Exactly. If there are no classes tomorrow, yeah. where will they sit? Yeah. How will they learn? Yeah. And how will you come out and say, yes, I'm, yeah. the, I'm the principal, I did yeah. this, you understand? Exactly. In my time, the students exactly. really... Well, you know, and I think that sometimes we've dropped the bar so low, we don't even understand that the outcomes are the proof of our quality in terms of the teaching. Yeah, right. The outcomes are the proof. So if you have a school and your outcomes are only maybe 10 percent or 20 percent of your students writing BCE or YC or whatever they may be writing, uh, you know, pass their exams. That's an indictment, you know, but a lot of that also then comes back to student motivation. True. Right? And True. Yes. There's nothing that wants to Look make you them. go Look to that the school, environment. The exactly. Looks, it's, like, it's like even our home that is not nice is even nicer than this school. Do you understand? So why am I, well, well, you know, exactly. All of those things affect our students. Well, let's go take a look at a report by our colleague and correspondent, Calvis Tete. It's on the, about the Ensaba Presby Senior High School. And uh, the officials there are lamenting seriously about the state of the school and what it all means. We'll speak to Calvis later as well. Originally established in 1962 as a teacher training institution in the Agona Saba region of the Agona East District in the Central Region, Saba Presbyterian Teacher Training College transitioned into a senior high school. On October 29, 1972, following a decade of service as a teacher training facility, it welcomed its inaugural cohort of senior high school students initiating high school education. Founded by the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, the institution has over time educated numerous individuals, intertwining education with religious principles. 
Despite its historic successes as a premier training establishment, the shift from a training college to a senior high school has seen minimal infrastructure enhancement to accommodate its burgeoning student population. Presently bereft of a dining hall, the school's over 2,000 students resort to the use of the Presbyterian Lay Training Center for Males, a situation exacerbated by the incongruence between student numbers and available infrastructure. Consequently, school administrators have repurposed two canteen rooms and the ground floor of a disused girls' dormitory block into a makeshift classroom. Beyond these challenges, various abandoned school projects exacerbate the situation, while the female student body of over 900 students contend with a paltry 12-seat toilet facility leading to inconvenience and the emergence of unconventional solutions such as wrap and throw practice where students unable to wait in line resort to using polythene bags for disposal. Additionally, numerous school structures have languished unpainted for years with several classroom roofs showing signs of significant wear and tear. Headmaster Reverend Kenneth Osafwa Mankwa articulates the school's challenges to city news issuing a plea for assistance. For 62 years now, the school hasn't begotten assembly hall or dining hall or kitchen complex. Since the brothers go to the Presbyterian Lay Training Center for their meals, and they go in batches of three, and it affects the contact hours. The duty post vehicle that the school owns is 2012 registration number. I went to the Director General some time ago and I said that on his desk, no school where I got to register number 12 hadn't gotten replacement. But here's the case the Bank President Senior High School has not gotten any new pickup since the old ones were being replaced. Also, our teacher's flat for about seven years now, it has been ripped off. School student population of 2,254. When we have classes, we have turned two canteen rooms to become classroom and abandoned gas dormitory block under construction. The ground floor has also been used as classrooms. Initially grappling with the limited healthcare access due to the absence of dedicated facility, Students of Nsaba Presby Senior High School have received a lifeline courtesy of the Europe Presbytery of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, which has established a health center on campus. The facility aims to address student health needs with commitment made to address other infrastructure deficits by engaging alumni support. So we actually didn't know about these challenges until today. So we, we, we will be thinking about it and we'll do what we can. Obviously, we, we, our members solely, this, this project, uh, the infirmary was solely uh, supported and, and, and built by funds from our members who gave generously. And I'm sure when they see the need, they will also rise to the occasion and give generously to whatever cause we decide to help with. Very... Um prestigious school uh, from way back in the day uh, left to rot really you know and, and I dare say it has churned out many 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 people over the years but look at the state of the school and um, of course they are left to their own devices now the issue for me is multiple fold right if you if you have a leader in charge of the school, the headmaster, and I don't know the full extent of the headmaster's powers yeah. in terms of what he can and cannot do. Of course, you have a board of the school and so on and so forth. There, there's, there's always ranking, right, of authority. Then you also have the local school administration in terms of the Ghana Education Service and their systems also. Now, what I'm thinking about is can we not create sustainable um, systems for funding some of these projects True. through the alumina, alumni, yeah. right? Because you find that 
um, many people pass through our schools. They finish school, get into decent jobs. Some of them go abroad. They're doing decently well in life. If we tap into these thousands of people that have passed through, that becomes, it's like, it's like a low-hanging sure. fruit, okay? It becomes a way and a means by which we can channel. And you see, if one person doesn't have to give a lot, but you collect a little from a lot of Everybody, people, yeah. then I can always give next year. I can always give the following year. You know, so you always have a stream of income that's coming that can be used you know, to support our schools. Sure. You know, and, and in Ghana, we are blessed in the sense that a lot of, a lot of schools abroad, the, the love and the passion for the school is at the university level. So when, they, when, they, when people are going for homecoming, they don't go for homecoming at their secondary schools. But in Ghana, that's where True. we yes, go for yes, homecoming. Yes, it's yes, at our yes, secondary yes, school yeah. level. Because that's where I think the boarding school system and all of that really created a love and a passion for our schools. So a lot of people are very passionate about their schools. Actually, it's true because... Not it, so much their unis. It, actually, it's true because it was in Ghana that mm. I realized that, wow, they really have like a whole high school yes, culture. Yes, it's like a, everybody's repping their high school. It's a major thing in Ghana. When I came here, I was like, what is all this? Yeah, because I didn't know <laughs> Why this. are you repping your exactly. high school? But yeah, you're right. Because usually homecoming is usually like... For a the uni. uni level. Yes. Yeah, but now in Ghana, it's actually um, the, the, the secondary, secondary school, school level. level. Yeah. No matter what age you are, you still come so back historically, and school. Historically, and I, I, I dare say this is why it's, it's so. Historically, and almost all the secondary schools that we have have been boarding schools, right? One, or they've actually had a boarding side to the school. Yeah. Right? Even if they are day, they, some are day schools, they also have a, board, a boarding side to it. But beyond that, remember that we were going to school for seven years. Mm -hmm. So you would go in at first year. The earliest you would leave the school is fifth year and you go to another school for two years mm -hmm. or maybe you're done at the end of the five years right but a lot of people would go to school for a full seven years so you're in this this same school for seven good years that's the same environment then, that's the same family then at that time you leave and go to uni for three years true you see so the bond was created there in the secondary school so we shouldn't joke with it because it's a, it's a low-hanging fruit for us, right? Anyway, our correspondent who brought us our report, Calvis Tete, has joined us on the line. Calvis, good morning. Yes, How are you? I'm good, and you yourself? Very well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for shining a light on the challenges that this school in, in Sabah is experiencing. Uh, walk us a little bit through um, the location of this school. What um, what are the surrounding towns? Give us a sense for people who are watching. They have no idea where uh, the Insaba um, Presbyterian Senior High School is located. Well, uh, Aguna Insaba Presbyterian Senior High School is located in the Aguna East District of the Central Region. Uh, it also shares border with Aguna Diakwa. Actually, we pass through Aguna Diakwa through to Insaba. Uh, there are some other communities that share border. It is also closer to Aguna Suedro and some other communities. Um, the the plight of the school, uh, myself, I was very surprised when I got to the school and, and, and realized that Aguna Zaba Senior High School was was in ruins. You know, this has been an old school. I mean, mm. we know Aguna Zaba, which was built by the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. Mm. Uh, initially, it was a training college, and so it transitioned into a senior high school after some years. But the question people keep on asking is that, I mean, the structures were built by the training college, when it was the training college, sorry. Mm. So now that it transitioned into a senior high school, what structures have been added? Mm. Uh, when I got to the school, I noticed there were some structures uh, which were started by the Jackson. It has not been completed. There's a big dining hall project going on. It has not been completed. And, and David, the challenges of this school are enormous. Mm. I mean, right down from the building itself, you could see that there's wear and tear on the building the net of the, some of the structures are worn out mm. to the extent that even the, the girls' dormitory, they don't have structures for the girls. 
Uh, mm. Some of them are, are left with no option than to use a 12 seater KVIP. Over 900 girls, over 900 girls, David. Wow. And uh, some of them have to engage in uh, shift and throw, excuse my word, you know, because sometimes they can't wait in line for their colleague to use it mm. and to make your score before it gets to be attend. So, uh, so, so you you're saying, so you're saying, you send your child to such a school, yeah. And then you hear that he or she goes into this process. Maybe this child way back in the house, he has access to toilet facility, a basic Ghanaian home, a toilet facility, and all those things. And he goes to his senior high school, and there are a myriad of challenges your child has to come, is confronted with. Uh, bed bath is another challenge because, you know, the place is not well kept. And some of the students, the headmaster even kept on echoing that mm. bed bath it, it has been a challenge, David. So it tells you they have a huge challenge in that school, David. Wow. Now, for so what you were describing earlier is that the, the girls, some of them, or maybe a lot of them, have to resort to using polythene bags to, um, to defecate in, and then they throw the polythene bags away. Did I get that right? Exactly that, David. Uh, the headmaster re echoed that, that portion when I, I interviewed him, saying that the girls sometimes have to use polythene bags and then yeah, attend to nature's call and then throw it somewhere, you know, because over 900 wow. girls are competing with just 12 seater KVIP daily. Wow, wow, wow. This is, this is stressing, uh, distressing, very distressing. Um, and, 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 and David, yes, you know, ahead. quite apart from that, you know, the, the dormitories are not enough. Students are forced to use the Presbyterian Lay Training Center as class which is out of campus. And uh, it's, it's quite a worrying situation. According to the headmaster, uh, this, I mean, I mean, it's into academic time, you know, and they, they are always behind time. Uh, but despite that challenge, they, 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 I mean, they try their best to teach these children, but it is impacting negatively on academic work. Now, um, being a senior high school, um, they are obviously competing with many others in the country uh, when it comes to the WASI exams and all of that. Um, how has in Saba uh, Presbyterian uh, City High School, fed generally speaking, in terms of the region, or is it is it like one of the top schools? You know, middle level, lower end. What are we talking about? Well, uh, David, you know, the, the headmaster from all indication in the, uh, pointed out that I mean, the school is in the middle level. You know, but he believes as old as the school is, it could have been at the top notch. Mm. Uh, I mean, if you mention in high schools across the country but because of some of these challenges they are going through. Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes it difficult for the teachers to even have enough time to teach the children. Mm -hmm. uh, they, you know, they, they, there are a lot of challenges. You know, you could see that some of the structures themselves are old, but yeah. they need to be even pulled down and then built, uh, and, then, and then possibly a new one is being mm -hmm. replaced. Mm -hmm. Some of the structures are completely out of order. Uh, and, and, you know, the headmaster, from all indications, I mean, he would have loved to, you know, uh, confront the issue, but, you know, he's afraid to also speak so much that, you know, he will be victimized. So, mm -hmm. this is the situation, this is the situation that needs urgent attention, particularly from old students of the school, I mean, who can, who can come in to help. Uh, they are, according to the headmaster, there are several old students who have passed through the school and, uh, and have achieved greater heights in life, and so he wanted to use this opportunity to also appeal to the old students of the school, I mean, to, to save the situation, because this is a situation that needs urgent attention, David. All right. Carvis, um, basically, um, in your report, you also said that this school has been there for about um, 60 years. And I want to believe that this, the whole deterioration of the, deterioration of the um, building did not start today. So when it all started, do you have any idea what they did to, you know, even try to salvage the situation? Well, um, uh, according to the headmaster, you know, um, he, he, had made, he had written several letters to the uh, municipal assembly, Aguna East Municipal Assembly, um, to, 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 to get funds to complete certain projects that have been left abandoned. And then to, to those that matter, even to the old students to come to the aid of the school. And, and uh, he's hoping that they'll, they'll get response, you know, for a school of such stature being over 60 years and above. He believes that this shouldn't be the state of the school. And so he, he is appealing to the old students of the school. Uh, the municipal assembly, he says they have come to the area several times to access to, to, I mean, to access the extent of damage. But he is hoping that, I mean, they would come and then complete some, some projects that have been abandoned. And, you know, it, it, it's sad to see that there are projects that have been abandoned that could have been completed for these children to, to use. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, 
everyone has turned a deaf ear to the situation. Nobody seems to, to care about whatever is happening in the school. And so it gets frustrating for the headmaster. Right. And we also saw in the report um, where um, the Presby Church, yeah, they actually um, uh, put up a new building as a hospital or something, a small hospital or a clinic for the, for the school. And also, um, during this time, there was a lady that you were talking to. She said this is the first time they are hearing about it. How come it's the first time they are hearing about it if, she's, um, if they are all part of the Presbyterian um, you know, fraternity? Yes, you know, um, what is happening is that that lady uh, you saw in the video, I mean, she was part of a group in, in the United Kingdom uh, oh, to construct okay. that uh, small facility, the, the, health, the health center for the school, because there's no facility to attend to the children when they get sick. And so, so out of frustration, she had to mobilize uh, Presbyterian people and the old students of Mr. Bar to come and construct this facility. But she was surprised that some of these things were not known to her. So she says uh, she's going back to the UK, she would have to organize some old students to attend to that need of the school. Because I, I pointed out to her that the school is in bad need of infrastructure. So apart from uh, the, the health, the, 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 the facility, what else are they going to do? So she said, uh, when she, once she goes back to the UK, she's going to organize her colleagues old students to ensure that, I mean, they do something for the school. Okay. Mm. Well, is she, was she herself an old student? Do you know? Yeah, she herself was an old student of the school. Okay. And okay. I mean, so she, 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 mm. she expressed frustration at the situation. She never knew this was the extent of damage. And so actually we can't pinpoint that if the information has gone down well to the old students. But obviously, you know, David, for such a school, they organize old students reunion. Old students yeah. come to the school. They have meetings upon meetings. So uh, the headmaster is saying that the, the old students are aware of the situation. And uh, he's hoping that, I mean, I mean, they will find time and organize themselves and come and support the school mm. in terms of the infrastructure. Mm. All right. Thank you very much, Calvis. We really appreciate your time. And uh, that was Calvis Tete. He is our central regional correspondent. Now, you see what we're talking about? old students and the importance of the place of old students and old student associations, you know, and coming together to support your alma mater. Yeah. Because you see, at the end of the day, um, how much is government going to do? Yeah. How much can government do when government has a million things on their radar to take care of education, to take care of health, to take care of various different things, right? So for me, I think that when we talk about a collective effort, part of the, com the conversation has to be about the benefit the school gave us. What are we giving back yes, to the yes, school? Yes, yes, yeah. You know, for future generations to also benefit, right? And mind you, the population 40 years ago, 50 years ago, was very different the from friends, the population today. Different, exactly. Do you see? So, again, I think that it makes sense for all of us to look back at our old schools and say, what can we do? You know, and if you're, if we're, if we're, if we gather the numbers, we don't have to put too much pressure on any one person. Sure. Once you have numbers, mm -hmm. everybody just gives a little, and it goes a long way. Sure. You know, and I think that that's what in Sabah uh, Presbyterian um, Senior High School in Aguna in Sabah should really look at. Um, and of course, government will do what they can. Uh, but then again, I also believe that the old school associations uh, need to be stronger, you know, bigger, stronger, um, and then we'll be able to impact more. Yeah. Know? And kudos to those who organize themselves to set up the infirmary, uh, because every school needs to have one. You know, thousands of students are on campus. How is it that there's no um, sick bay? infirmary for them to go to it's it's a it's a very dangerous situation you don't want your child to be in such a school you know because at the end of the day if something happens when they're in school you need you need the first reaction sure, sure. to be to be you know to, to be uh, capable of, of of saving the child right right and, and also to add to everything that we just said yeah. you know you started this conversation mm. with um with stating the fact that we have a problem with of maintenance. Uh, you know maintenance yeah. so i think it's time mm. wherever you are as a parent mm. who, like as a human being mm. you should try to cultivate the culture of keeping things right yeah. I mean even to the kids mm. do you understand like teach your kids how to keep things right because at the end of the day as, as, as we have kids mm. in the school there they can also contribute to you know mm. this 
see their walls. Mm. Look at their walls. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, Why are they yeah, writing yeah, on the walls? Yeah, you understand? Yeah, 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 so yeah, if you yeah. teach them this from home, I yeah. even teach them this at school, like, yeah. you know what, let's learn to keep our things yeah. well. If you don't, we're going to get punished. <clears throat> I think then it will all help. Yeah. You know, you know, just, the, just a funny side, side you know, thing. Um, when you talk about writing on walls, mm -hmm. a lot of parents assume that when a child is writing on a wall, it's like a child knows that that's the place to write and that's the only place to write so leave them to write no. right um that's indiscipline and that's a failure on the part of a parent you can't just leave your child to scribble on the wall and then you look at the child scribbling and say, oh that's why when i talk to him to stop he doesn't mind me parent that's why you are parent it's called parenting okay you see what the, scri the scribbles the kids are done on the wall in the school. They learned it from home. And they are growing up. And they are learning to deface property. No, true. They are learning that it's okay to deface public property. They are learning it. Well, however you see it, they, have, they, are, they, they did it at home. They were not stopped. They've it come came to from school. somewhere, exactly. It came from somewhere, you know. So the whole mind. Listen, when a nail comes out of a door mm -hmm. and you see it, it must be put back. Exactly. If the nail comes out of a door and you don't put it back, that's the beginning of the decay. Exactly. You know, and, and for me, it's all about paying attention to those things. You know, a washroom, you go in there, you see that the, the tap, the faucet is beginning to, to, to turn at an angle. Report it. Get it fixed. Because that's the, that's the beginning of maintenance. So, so it's like, oh, it's not my business. It's not my business. Not Whose my business own. is it to exactly. see that the thing is going off? No, report it. If it's not dealt with that, you've done your part. Yeah. But report it. Yeah. It's important. All right?